Today, you are becoming a Web3 developer. Simply follow along in this beautiful series where I show you how to create this dApp where we are going to be reading from Ethereum smart contracts. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashtips and welcome back to my channel. So yes, today is the day where you transition from being a Web2 dev to a Web3 dev. I'm going to show you some concepts on how to connect to the blockchain reading some data and all these fun little concepts. This all will be shown in this full series consisting of a few different parts. I hope you enjoy it, but let's look at what we're going to build. We are going to be using React to build our dApp. But what is this dApp? Well, it's basically a collection gallery. As an NFT artist, I have a wide variety of NFTs that I've placed on the blockchain each sitting in a separate contract. So my goal would be to create some kind of dApp where I can bring them together and show a user, a collector, how many of these items and artworks they have collected. The dApp works like this. As soon as I refresh or click on this connect button, I get a chance to connect my MetaMask wallet. As soon as I'm connected, it can pick up how many of these golden edition artworks do I have? And over here I can see I own 5 out of the 15 possible artworks. And that's very basic. But by following this tutorial series, you'll learn a lot, such as interacting with contracts using ethers, and just simply some general styling as well in HTML and CSS. The concepts that you'll learn you can apply to various dApps, or who knows, maybe you have your own NFT community and you want to build the exact same dApp. Whatever the case, I did try and make it simplistic, understandable, and taking it easy. It will help you if you have JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and React knowledge, but it's not needed, as long as you just follow it step by step. So, I hope you are excited for following the series. It might be a few parts, so just keep an eye out for the videos dropping each day. And let's jump into this. If you feel like you're getting stuck at any point, go to hashtips.online, click on the Discord icon and join the Discord server. There are thousands of devs that's willing to help you out. Lastly, I want to say that giving this video a thumbs up, commenting below and subscribing to my channel really helps me out as a content creator. So I would really appreciate that as well. So to follow along, you need Node.js installed. So go to this website. Go to the downloads and install Node.js for your operating system. And if you don't have one already, you'll need an IDE to work with. I prefer using Visual Studio Code. So you can also go ahead and install that for your operating system. But the first thing that we want to do is actually get a working directory. I'm going to make a working directory and we're going to call it Gallery. Now that we have this, what we can do is go and open Visual Studio Code and open that folder. I'm going to navigate to our gallery and open this. Next, go to the top tabs and click on Terminal, New Terminal. You should see a terminal pop up here at the bottom. Firstly, let's check if we've installed Node correctly. So you can type in Node-V and press Enter. You should see a version number over here. That all looks good, so now we can create our React app. So what you can do is type in N px create dash react dash app and give it a name i'm going to maybe call mine collection like so hit enter and now a react app will be generated for us in our gallery directory okay and it's done so we can see that we can run these commands but firstly we need to cd and go into the collections directory Instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is say open again and actually open the collections folder that was generated for us. That means that we will be in the root directory in our terminal. So now we should see the collection and then let's go and open a new terminal at the top again. And now we're in the root. So this is basically our React application. We can run npm run start to spin up a local instance of this application. And it will take us to the browser on localhost port 3000. 
And this is the basic app that we are going to now adapt, change and turn into our application. It's important to note that when we go back, we can see that in the terminal, this is busy running. If you want to stop it, you can press Ctrl C on a Mac and it will actually exit the execution. If you go back to the browser and refresh, it won't pick up the page. So to run it again, we have to run npm run start, hit enter, and we should see the instance back up. If we do make changes in these files, save it, it should automatically update live on the local instance. We're going to leave that running and we're going to clean up our project. The first thing I like to do is in the package.json file, I like to add this attribute, home page with a period. This basically says that once we've built the project and hosted in a subdirectory of some sort, that it will still run fine in there. So that's just something good that I like to add personally. Next, let's look in the source directory over here, the SRC folder. Firstly, I'm going to remove my test file. So I'm going to simply delete it. And the purpose is to show you, you know, the bare minimum that you need to run this project. We can also delete this logo.svg file. So remove that. And uh, don't worry about the errors over here. We'll resolve it just now. In the index.css file, at the very top, what we would like to add is basically an asterisk. And here we're going to make the margin equal to zero and the padding equal to zero. All this basically says is that every element should have a margin and a padding of zero. That makes the styling very flat, but that's okay because we are going to implement it as we go along. For the body, what I'm going to do is remove everything here and replace it uh, with these font types. I can also now remove the margin over there. And basically the font type can be either one of these if it can't pick up the first one. We can remove the code segment as well. And finally, let's give the entire app a dark background color. So we can type in background color and over here you can use hex values, um, all sorts of different formats. I like to use the RGB one and in Visual Studio Code, for instance, if we just have a black background, we can leave it as such, or we can hover over this icon and select a darker value that's not completely black, but just a darker gray. And that looks fine to me. So save this file. Then we can go ahead and look at how the app has changed. However, we will not be able to render it. If we go back to the browser, we can see that there's an error. And generally, the errors tells you where they are. So for instance, in the app.js file, if we go back and look in the app.js file, it is complaining because we don't have this logo attribute. We can simply remove it. We will remove more on this page, but let's remove that line and line seven. If we now jump back to the browser, we can see that the error is gone, but so is our logo because we don't have it anymore. We deleted that SVG. Nothing has changed, but that's okay. I just wanted to show you how to resolve an error if you find it in your code. Now, going back, we can probably get rid of most of this in here. We can even get rid of the class name and let's just leave a div saying hello, uh, maybe in between. Uh, we can also leave the app.css for now. We are going to uh, be changing the app.css, so actually, Let's remove everything in here in the app.css file, save that too, and save the app.js file. So if we go back, we can see a very dark background color, the color we've selected, as well as hello here at the top left corner. Seeing that for the most part, our whole app will have a dark background, we might as well in the base styles in the index.css file over there, uh, give it a color and we can just make this white and if you want the rgb value uh, we can do that save it and now we can at least see all the text that we're going to have on our app so currently this is only a web 2 app it's not a dap yet because we do not interact with a blockchain or even have that connection using a provider 
the ideal situation for us would be to use a MetaMask provider so that we can get the address and actually start interacting with a contract. We are going to be using ethers.js for this. So how do we install ethers to start this whole process? Well, firstly, let's go back to the code and in the terminal, press Control C and uh, exit this execution. We can also press Command K to clear the terminal. Now we can make use of Node's Package Manager, NPM, to install ethers. So what you can write is npm install or just i, but I like to write it out. So npm install ethers and hit enter. Once it's done, you should see something like this. Don't worry too much about the warnings. Uh, usually it's just underlying dependencies, mismatching with versions and sorting itself out. And uh, now what we can do is uh, if you want to check if we installed it correctly, go to the package.json file and then just verify if ethers is in the dependencies. And we have it. So everything seems fine so far. Let's go ahead and use ethers to get our address from MetaMask. So the first thing we need is actually ethers itself. So let's go and import ethers like so from ethers and then we can use it. So before we can use MetaMask as our provider, we need to make sure that MetaMask is installed and do a little bit of checks. For that, I'm gonna create a function and we're gonna create a function called init connection. This is going to be uh, equal to an anonymous function and uh, actually we're gonna make this asynchronous as well. So asynchronous, so let's get going. For the checks, we first need to check if the Ethereum MetaMask wallet is actually on the browser. And how do we know if MetaMask is actually on our extensions? Well, if you have MetaMask, there will be a window.ethereum object in the browser itself. So we can actually check if that object is there. So first thing is we'll write an if statement. And only if this if statement is correct, we'll execute the block. So the if statement would say, if the type of, uh, now we can actually query the window.ethereum. So we don't know if this Ethereum object is going to be there yet, right? So we can say, if it's uh, not equal to undefined, then only execute what's going to be in here. Else, we know that you don't have MetaMask, so we can just console.log saying please install MetaMask. Instead of just console.logging this out, you can reflect it in the UI as well. But let's call this function and see if we have MetaMask. For that, I'm going to add another console log saying we have MetaMask and then save it. The format will change because I've got Prettifier installed. But let's give it some space. And down here in the hello segment of our div, let's actually create a button. And this, we're going to call it uh, connect. This will be our connection button. We're going to give it an on click event handler. And then we're going to call the init connection. Save this. And then at the bottom over here, we need to now run npm run start again. Now this will start up the server for us. And we should see our application running. How do we get this developer tools? Well, if you get to your page, you can right click and select inspect. Here you can select console and now we can read what will it say if we click on connect. So once I click, I can see that you have MetaMask, right? And that's fantastic. That's exactly what we need. And we know that we have MetaMask so we can now initialize ethers with the MetaMask provider. For now, I can just close the console. Let's go back into the code and finish this block. I'm going to leave this console.log statement in there because we can use it for development purposes. So the next part is let's get the accounts. We can do that by adding this. We basically assign whatever is being returned over here to a variable called accounts. We are awaiting this and we are using the MetaMask provider 
to send a request and here we are requesting all the accounts. Now let's see if we can get the accounts. Here we can console.log the accounts as it is but accounts is an array so we can query the first index of this array and that should give us back the current account that we have selected on MetaMask. If we save this now and go back to the browser, right click inspect and then look at the console. When we click on connect now, MetaMask should pop up asking us to connect and allow us to read the accounts. Click on connect and here we go. I'm going to click on next and connect. And once this happened, that's why this is asynchronous and we need to await for the response. But once we get this back, we got the very first address that we have connected to this website. Now that we know this works, we can actually get rid of our logs because we don't want to clutter the code. And there we go. We have the accounts. But now we need to save and store this account information to know that we have an address connected to this website. For that, what I'm going to create is a state variable and I'm going to call this account and then also set account. This is just the convention from react and this I'm going to, I'm going to actually equal this to the use state variable. Now, Initially, this is going to start off as null. As I typed this in, you can see we have this imported from React. And this is the convention. This is the variable. And this is how we update this variable with this use state hook. Now that we have this, I can say set account. And after I have pulled the account successfully, let's set this to the first account. Just make sure that this is the account, not just the account, because we want to take this variable. And now that we have this, we should be getting this account saved in our variable. So with React, over here, let's create a paragraph tag and in curly braces, put the account variable over here. This is why React is so cool. Whenever there's a change to a state variable, it will re-render and display whatever we placed in there. So now I'm going to uh, save this and run it. So let's save and go to the browser. Back in my browser, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to disconnect my account. And when I refresh the page and click on the connect button, we see MetaMask popping up. We're going to say next and connect. And voila, you see my address over there. Now we successfully have grabbed my account from MetaMask. Next, we'll need to set up a provider so that we can start interacting with the contract. I am very excited to start building this whole experience, including all these different smart contracts in one dApp. You're going to learn a lot but this is unfortunately the end of part one. In the following parts, we will learn how to set up the providers, look at ABIs, interacting with contracts, like I said, pulling in the images, making sure we read from the contracts to make sure that someone does own an NFT. There's going to be a lot that we will cover. And that's why they are cut in small different pieces. So look out for the next video. I will be posting these parts every single day so you can follow along, take breathers in between and take in what you have learned. If you did enjoy the content, please leave me a thumbs up, give this video a like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.